Reddit ask me anything. I was a paid gestational surrogate for a couple I didn't know. Ask me anything. One year ago, an embryo belonging to a couple my surrogacy agency matched me with was implanted into my uterine lining. And three months ago, I gave birth to a baby that is not related to me genetically. It was an amazing experience. And it was surprisingly well paying. This is a harsh question but if for some reason the pregnancy resulted in a miscarriage, was there a clause that you'd still get some sort of compensation for the time you did spend carrying? That's a great question. The agency sent me my compensation once a month. Had I miscarried, I would have been allowed to keep the monthly payments I'd received up to that point, but there wouldn't be additional payments. I know I'm late to the party here, but curious about something. If you had changed your mind were you legally allowed to get an abortion? Like I assume if it's a contract part of that is that you have to carry the baby to term. But presumably there are at least some circumstances where you would be allowed to back out. The most obvious one being unexpected health complications. In the same vein. What if the other parents wanted to back out? Like at some point they decide they want an abortion. Or they decide that they think you're unfit to carry a game maybe for health reasons. Who knows? Do you have any say in what happens? Do they? What are the consequences for breaking the limitations? I don't think a contract proscribing any personal medical procedure would be enforceable in the US or EU. So if she wanted to get an abortion within the legal time frame, there shouldn't be anyone to stop her. The surrogacy agency wouldn't know anyway. Since medical records are private, she could say she miscarried. Since the adoption doesn't legally take place until after the birth, I'm assuming the parents could back out at any time. They'd just be out $50,000 plus. I would hope there would be some protection against the new parents backing out. 50k would not cover the cost of having an unplanned child to take care of. This is the more interesting edge case. That's so great that you did this for them. About the payments. Was it even payments? $50k9 or so months. Or were they smaller during the pregnancy and a larger payment at the end when the baby was born? A few payments in the beginning for each stage of the process, like dollar sign $x for getting medically cleared, dollar sign $y for doing the embryo transfer, and then it was a regular monthly payment for 9 months. How much did you get paid? There were some other things like travel and boarding reimbursement, but the total cash compensation came to around $50,000. I cannot imagine how that's worth it for that long of a process and recovery. We knew a couple that did it. They had four kids of their own. For whatever reason, pregnancy was quite easy for her. Her body seemed to bounce back to normal very quickly. She made about the that she would have if she worked full time. Which she did not. So she could stay home with her own kids and still earn a full time wage. She did it at least three times that I remember and even had twins for a couple once. That paid considerably more. The parents always lived out of state and would often invite her to visit with them during her pregnancy treating her to spa days, etc. Basically pampering her. She enjoyed it. Her husband was supportive. It worked well for them. This exactly. The way a woman's body reacts to pregnancy is highly variable. For some it's relatively easy. Was it hard to give up this baby that had been a part of you for 9 months? Did will you breast feed at all? Are you staying in touch with the couple at all? Is this a good thing for you? Will they raise the kid to know they were born via surrogate? Not hard at all. The couple I delivered for are wonderful people. And it makes me happy knowing that the baby I carried is going to get loving care from them. I didn't breast feed. Many surrogates will elect to pump, freeze, and ship breast milk. But I don't like pumping. So I didn't do this. I did pump a little while at the hospital. But after that, the baby was fed formula. I stay in touch the mom through texting. I check in every now and then to see how she and the baby are doing. Their current plan is to not let the child or anyone else know they used a surrogate. But that is rare. Most are open about surrogacy use. And I wonder if they will change their mind and tell the child years down the line. I hope they do. Did she have a fake pregnancy belly or how can they explain the new baby? Haha. <laughs> No fake pregnancy belly, that I know of anyway. Obviously, when you ran into people on the street, they automatically assumed it was your baby in there. How did you handle that situation? I always backed a Phoebe from friends. Oh, they're not mine, they're my brothers. Oh yes, 
There's something about a pregnant woman that seems to encourage strangers to ask questions and or make personal comments. I usually just smiled and said thank you for the congratulations, or answered whatever question, without bothering to correct the assumption that it was my baby because it wasn't worth going into the details with every grocery store cashier who wants to ask me if it's my first, is it a boy or girl, etc etc. My boyfriend would always get a kick out of being congratulated when people would assume he's the father. How was your BF's mindset towards the whole procedure? How has did the topic even come up? He was amazingly supportive, and as someone who had been through the surrogacy process on the parent's side, he understood a lot of what I was going through and was a great source of information and guidance. I had started the application process before I met him. It was clear after our first date that we were going to be serious. So I disclosed it to him to let him decide whether he wanted to continue to date a woman who was going to be pregnant with someone else's baby. He stuck around. Semicolon. Besides the regular pregnancy limitations, what new limitations or restrictions changed your life by being a surrogate? Did you have to change your diet or lifestyle at all to fit the needs once for their family baby? Oh, that's a great question. Once I was at about 30 weeks, my contract required me to stay within my state and within 50 miles of the hospital where I planned to deliver. That was especially restrictive because my boyfriend and I were long distance at the time, so it prevented me from driving to see him during the last two months of the pregnancy. He had to come visit me in order for us to see each other. About a month ago, I moved to his state, and we live together now. But this move would have happened much sooner if not for the surrogacy. The state where he lives doesn't have surrogacy friendly laws, so my contract wouldn't have allowed me to live here. Did you meet and connect with a couple during the surrogacy process? Did they join you for things like doctor appointments? Did you join them for things like gender reveals, baby showers, etc? They don't live in my state, so there wasn't much face to face interaction. We had an initial meeting over a Skype video call, arranged by the surrogacy agency, to see if we felt like we were a good match. I met them in person during my medical workup at their fertility clinic, and again at the embryo transfer. After that, they came to my state for the 20 week ultrasound, and then I saw them at the hospital for the delivery. Some surrogates get to participate in the baby shower and etc. But that wasn't the case for us because of the distance and their decision to keep their use of a surrogate private. Were you allowed to deliver it any way you like? Yes, I got to call the shots for the birth plan. What did this do to your personal love life? What about life goals in general? Did this get in the way? Surprisingly, it was an overall positive for my personal love life. I had just started dating my current boyfriend about a month before the embryo transfer. Once it was clear we were going to be dating seriously, I told him all about my plan to be a surrogate, and he surprised me by telling me that his daughter had been carried and delivered by a surrogate as well. It was an incredible coincidence that we really bonded over. It didn't get in the way of life goals. The opposite. Actually, I used the payments to put my daughter in a Montessori preschool pay off my student loans, and a trip to Disney World. Colon. Your daughter is quite young, but did she ask about the pregnancy or the baby? How did you explain it to her? She never asked. On two occasions I did sit down and explain things in a way I thought she might understand. I'm making a baby to give to someone who wants to be a mommy, but I don't know if she got it. How did it feel compared to how you gave birth the first time? Much much easier and faster the second time. And recovery was fantastic because I got to sleep at nights instead of constantly being woken up by a hungry newborn. Do you have to pay the same tax rate on this as you would on a salary? I'm not from USA so I'm not familiar with tax laws. The compensation is taxed as if it was independent contractor earnings. So come next tax season I'm sure I will owe quite a bit. That's interesting. I had a friend who did it twice. They said they didn't pay taxes cause they considered it to be pain and suffering and likened it to workers compensation. They even went as far as to show me a ton of surrogacy blogs where surrogates were all talking about not reporting it for taxes. Lawyer here. That's a very risky position to take tax wise. The IRS likely would not agree. Sets you up for a bad audit if the IRS sees it. The bank has to report deposits over 10k and the IRS sometimes investigated them. 
How did this affect your day job? Did your day job offer maternity benefits? Were you allowed to take them? If your day was more physical, were you given lighter duties? I had to miss time occasionally at work for the prenatal appointments. But I have a remote job that gives me some flexibility in the hours I worked. I tried to schedule the appointments during my lunch break. And I could make up time by working a bit late as needed so that I wouldn't deplete my vacation time for surrogacy stuff. I am a translator, so my job involves sitting at a desk at a computer. Very well suited to a tired pregnant woman with low energy. I didn't qualify for maternity benefits. Some surrogates do qualify at their companies. But the employee handbook at my company said you have to be a caregiver for the baby in order to get maternity leave. I could have taken and paid time off through FMLA. But the sick time I'd accumulated was all I needed for recovery because I didn't have any complications from the delivery. Now that seems crazy. Part of the med for maternity leave is to recover, baby or not. I don't really understand how someone can keep their use of a surrogate private. Did the parents say they adopt it? Did the mother pretend to be pregnant for 9 months so it would seem like she's the one who gave birth? It's easy to pull off if you don't live near family and keep your mouth shut on social media. I've seen birth announcements after having no clue that anyone was pregnant before. Yep, I haven't been answering any questions about how they kept it private. But it's a lot easier than most think. I live 2 miles away from family and they didn't realize that I was pregnant with my daughter until we called to tell them after she was born. They saw me several times up until about 30 weeks. Baggy clothes work wonders and people are not observant sometimes. It's pretty much just a keeping your mouth shut thing. Did you feel any attachments to the baby? Was it hard to give it away? Will you get to see it? Do you want to see it? How much money did you make? Did you pay for your own pregnancy expenses? How did your family, and partner if you have one, react? Not a lot of attachment. Even when I had my own baby 4 years ago, I wasn't the type to feel that strong bond right away. It took a couple of weeks. So I felt confident going into the surrogacy that I would have little to no sadness giving her away. As long as the couple wants to keep their use of a surrogate private. Visits are out. But I do get pics. I'd love to visit sometime down the line. Though, if they decide to open up about the surrogacy, the total cash compensation came to around $50,000. And any pregnancy related expenses were all covered by the intended parents. I didn't even have to use my own insurance. They paid for a health insurance for me that is specifically for surrogates. My partner was extremely supportive throughout the entire process. We just started dating around the time I was getting the embryo transfer. So it was a unique way to begin a relationship. Do you feel like you would have been more attached had you not already had your own baby first? I don't think so. But having my own baby first, where I didn't feel that magic bond during pregnancy that some women say they had, made me more confident that I wouldn't have any emotional difficulties. Did the couple pay for your medical costs, including delivery and checkups before you have birth? Yes, all medical costs were covered. I didn't even have to use my own health insurance. The parents purchased a policy in my name that covered all the pregnancy care and the delivery. When you gave birth did they bring the baby to you to hold? They normally do this so the mother can form a bond. But in your case I suppose they didn't want that. Did you form a bond? Were the genetic parents at the birth? Was it hard to give the baby away afterwards? Was the whole experience worth it? The intended parents were in the delivery room when the baby came out. And the mother did skin to skin. I got to lie down and rest. I held the baby for the first time the next morning. And I felt more of a bond than I would have if it was any other baby. But not so strongly that I felt any difficulty giving them the baby. They are going to give that baby so much love. And yes, the experience was so worth it. The pregnancy was occasionally tough, though overall I had an easier time than many do. But it's a good feeling to have helped the couple become parents as they always wanted. I've been curious about becoming a surrogate. But in Canada you can't charge money to be a surrogate. You're only reimbursed for actual expenses, which is basically nothing because we have universal healthcare. Would you have still become a surrogate for strangers in that situation? Honestly, probably not. While the money wasn't my only motivation, it was certainly a crucial one to convince me to go through the IVF process. 
pregnancy, delivery, and recovery. Was there prenatal testing for any particular conditions, such as Down syndrome? If a test had come back positive, how would that have been handled? Is that something negotiated in the contract with the bio-parents? The embryos are tested, and the healthiest one is selected for the implantation. During the pregnancy, the screenings are the same as for regular pregnancies. If there had been a problem with the fetus, the parents could have elected to terminate the pregnancy. This sort of thing is discussed prior to a surrogate being matched to the parents. Because obviously a surrogate cannot be forced to abort against her will. During the matching process, I told the agency I would agree to abort if that was the parents wish. If I had been against abortion, they would have matched me with parents who were also against abortion. What would your compensation have been if they elected an abortion for you? Also, what if something occurred where your life was put in danger in order to continue to carry the fetus and needed a medically necessary abortion? Would they have been able to seek legal recourse to prevent that or sue you after the fact? I don't remember the exact figure, but there would have been compensation if I had to get an abortion. My contract stated that if termination was medically recommended for my sake, I was allowed to terminate the fetus. Similarly, if there was a complication during pregnancy or delivery where a decision had to made whether to prioritize saving my life for the child's, my life would be prioritized. Is it easier to become a surrogate than to donate eggs? I don't ever want kids of my own so I figured I'd donate my eggs to someone who would appreciate them and I didn't even make it from the online questionnaire to the in-person interview. I think the selection requirements for surrogacy are more restrictive. You have to have had at least one successful pregnancy and there are age and BMI maximums and etc. Most who apply don't qualify for one reason or another. Are there rules when you are a surrogate? Do they dictate what you eat or do? Not really. My contract only required me to abstain from drinking, smoking, or doing drugs and to follow my doctor's instructions. Do you feel you got treated any differently by hospital staff when they found out your surrogate? No, just occasional awkward moments when they would refer to the baby as mine or call me the mother out of habit. Have you ever thought about keeping the baby for yourself? That's the biggest fear of the parents. Nope, I never felt the least temptation to keep it. I think that's more an issue for private surrogate arrangements done outside of a surrogacy agency. When you go through an agency, they require you to have a watertight contract that would prevent a surrogate from trying to keep the baby. To what extent were lawyers involved in the process? Lawyers were involved at the stage of the journey after my medical testing but before the actual embryo transfer. Both sides, the parents and me, had their own lawyer. The parents paid for both of the lawyers. Once the surrogacy contract was finalized and signed, the legal stage of the journey was complete. Even though the baby isn't yours, does it still have the increased risks associated with a pregnancy if you are older than normal, like 35-40 years old? Oh, that's an interesting question. I'm actually not sure. I do know that surrogacy agencies typically have a cutoff age of 39, so maybe? Do you know if someone can have a surrogate for their baby even though the mother is in theory able to carry her own child to term? I am extremely scared of pregnancy and childbirth and never ever want to be in that situation. But I am not completely against having a child. So now I am unsure if I would just be called selfish. I get that there's infertile and gay couples with a baby wish. And people who are not able to carry due to medical reasons. I even deem them to be more important than me. I believe so, but someone in that situation might have to wait on the wait list a bit longer than others in order to be matched with a surrogate. Worth it? For sure, I'm on the fence about whether I'll do it again, but I'm glad I did it once, kinda like a bucket list thing, colon. Sorry to be a negative Nancy but I have a few questions. Is there any liability coverage if you weren't able to carry to term? What about liability coverage if the pregnancy caused complications resulting in your death? Or is that up to you to get term life insurance? What about liability coverage for complications during the pregnancy that would have prevented you from conceiving or maintaining a future pregnancy? If I wasn't able to carry to term, the compensation payments would have stopped at that point. But I wouldn't have been required to pay back the amount I'd been compensated up to that point. So no need for liability coverage in that case. Yes, 
The intended parents purchased a life insurance plan for me for the duration of the surrogacy in case of my death. I had my daughter as the beneficiary. There are set payments for loss of uterine function or a hysterectomy. Was this your idea or something both you and your boyfriend thought of? How did you discuss and agree to do this with your boyfriend? Did your contract stipulate that you had to remain in a monogamous relationship? Did it place restrictions on your sex life? I mean for health reasons. Not what you do privately in your bedroom? It was my idea. Something I'd been wanting to do for years. I actually met my boyfriend after I'd already started the application process. So all he had to agree to was to continue dating me after I told him I was going to be a surrogate. Thankfully he chose to stay. Colon. My contract didn't restrict anything in my romantic life or sex life. But it did require me to disclose that I was dating someone. And my boyfriend had to go through a background test. A drug test. And an STD test. Although I'm not sure what the result would have been had he failed any of those. How old are you? 34. I've read some things about small amounts of blood crossing the placental barrier that's how they can check for chromosome disorders with just a blood draw now, and it leading to the fetus inheriting some things from the pregnant woman whether or not they're genetically related. Did this come up in screening or was it a concern for you at all? This is a cool question. Never considered that. Same. Wish I could answer it. This didn't come up in screening and was never mentioned to me. So was your egg used or was the mother's? The one that will be raising the child. Egg fertilized then implanted in you? If it was yours. Did you have to provide family history health info for the parents to provide the best care for their child? Also, were there drug tests during the pregnancy? I'm not saying you would ever do this. But how do they prevent a surrogate from drinking alcohol smoking etc? It was an embryo made from the mother's egg fertilized by the father's sperm. So genetically it was 100% theirs. Meanwhile, I was on medication basically a form of birth control that kept me from ovulating. A drug test was part of my medical workup. My contract also stated that I could be randomly tested at any point. Did you go into labor naturally or were you induced to ensure the parents were there for the birth? If naturally, how did the parent make sure they didn't miss it? I know labors typically go faster with each pregnancy. We were going to wait for it to happen naturally, but we got impatient and went in for an induction in week 39. Ro, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content moite. It's free and that's a great price.